So I was explaining about the problem domain. So when it comes to nutrition, what causes malnutrition? So nutrition is the like a broad thing. The problem is actually the malnutrition. And there are acute causes, for example, like diarrhea or infection that can lead to childhood malnutrition. And there can be chronic causes as well. So this is why uh, addressing problem of uh, nutrition has been very difficult. And in most of our countries, uh, uh, just like in the case of Sri Lanka, the approach has traditionally been very health centric, right? So just because all the malnourished cases are diagnosed by the health sector, what we first do is we'll try to see whether we can come up with an intervention, a health related intervention to address this. But our understanding, again, uh, uh, the understanding uh, based on uh, decades of studies in Sri Lanka, there are ample amount of research publications as well, is that most of the causes leading to chronic malnutrition, especially, are not directly related to health causes, right? So this is where a health-centered approach of addressing malnutrition has been questioned. So I'm talking about the context 10 years back. So even in 2013, they had this uh, question, if you take very health-centered approach, will that work? So that was the kind of uh, question that uh, the country had 10 years back. So this is when they came up with this uh, uh, concept called multi-sector action plan for nutrition. So the objective was you will get hold of all the stakeholders, not just uh, health sector. You will have a health sector and agriculture. Um, now, I mean, it's kind of ironic now that these days we are talking about uh, climate health and how climate, agriculture, nutrition, health are all connected. But like this was uh, an issue that we realized a long time. And this uh, plan was uh, uh, kind of drafted by the presidential secretariat, kind of like highest level in the administra administration hierarchy in Sri Lanka. And they came up with a concept note. But the main problem was to implement this, they needed to know the problem, right? So the problem identification and getting hold of all the stakeholders and putting uh, an, an action plan together uh, was missing one key component, which was timely data. So that was a problem. So to sort that, the main issue that we had was like, it was all paper-based information that we had at that moment. Uh, I mean, even when it comes to data, I think it's the same in other countries as well. Health sector has a lot of data compared to many other sectors. In other sectors, data collection may be not so efficient, right? So health, we had data, but most of the data was in papers. And some of them are aggregate, but the thing is like children are having different courses for malnutrition. So you needed to kind of cater some individual intervention. So to do that, you needed data from uh, individual children. That's number one. And the other thing, this data has to be shared with all different stakeholders, right? So that was the second problem. So to address these two problems, a decade ago, they realized that uh, paper-based systems are not going to work. So they had to come up with a digital system. So how this was planned is what my colleague from the Ministry of uh, Health Sri Lanka, in fact, she has also been uh, working on this thing for more than five years now, right? Yeah, five or six years. So she will present about uh, how, I mean, how they uh, approach this problem and what are, what are the digital technologies used and how the uh, implementation worked and what were the challenges and what were the lessons learned. Uh, so Dr. Amila will be discussing about that. So she is a medical officer in health informatics in nutrition division of uh, Ministry of Health Sri Lanka. And a, a little bit of technical things about the approach. Uh, my colleague Hasli Mohammed from uh, his Sri Lanka, he will uh, highlight on that. So uh, we'll first invite Dr. Amila Lianage from Ministry of Health Sri Lanka to present the problem domain, approach, challenges and way forward. Thank you, Dr. Pamun. And I want to thank his Sri Lanka and Health Information Unit for giving the Nutrition Division Minister of Health this opportunity. Uh, so let me uh, briefly tell you about the public health sector in Sri Lanka. Uh, on the top, we have the Ministry of Health and the campaigns, cam the, the control programs. And at the field level, we have a very extensive uh, field level public health care delivery service. Uh, this is the organization hierarchy, the provinces, districts, then it goes on uh, un until uh, Ramanila Darjian levels. 
So in the uh, basic hierarchical area in public health service delivery is the medical officer of health areas. In Sri Lanka, we have around 356 areas and the in charge officer of that area is a medical doctor and under him there are needed to have that requirement and real-time data transmission, data to be shared with the stakeholders as part of the multi-sector action plan for nutrition. So the system design, it has two components, DHS to mobile application and the web component. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Hasli Mohammed to briefly explain about the technology behind it. Yeah. So just one question. What is the, the population for the agent? The like target for each PHM. Public health provider. So uh, again, uh, I can only give you an estimate. It's around so it can vary between like thousand right so thank you so much so this is the first version of the app which we have developed as dr pamod mentioned this was developed way back earlier where we have a, a proper uh, dhis2 based android sdk was there so the entire application was a custom application and the only way for us to make this application is to make a communication between the DHIS2 is through the web APIs. So I hope most of you are already aware of that from the Austin's presentation. Then once the Android SDK was released for DHIS2, then um, we were one of the early adapters and there were some pros and cons being an early adapter of any kind of software applications. Some of the things will be supported and some of the things will not be supported. So what is the reason why we want to go to SDK? So first of all, we need to know what is actually an SDK. So SDK stands for Software Development Kit. It's kind of a library where it provides a complete um, holistic approach of uh, kind of a data access layer where you don't have to worry about writing queries and how to get the data. Simply you can call the functions and you can integrate them into your applications. So you no longer need to write web APIs in order to get the data. And uh, some of the advantages which I can think of is you don't have to write any more API queries. Instead, you can focus on the functionalities and you can keep on developing the applications. And another advantage is the offline collection of data and syncing the data back when you are online, because that is a new, true nature in most of the countries, I think, right? So except the metropolitan areas, there are some areas where there is no internet connectivity to the community. 
So this is one of the advantage we see. And uh, we can also ensure by using the Android SDK for DHIS2 that whatever you build is compatible for that specific version and upwards. So even if you tend to use any kind of a old feature, still that is supported. Or even if you use kind of a new feature that is still sometimes, again, you have to refer to the paid documentation, whether it is backward compatible or not, but still most of the things would work. And another important advantage you find is error management. So if you're trying to communicate with the server in a different way, which is not ideal, then it will pop up an error. Then you can correct your issues in your application. So at the time of development, we are currently still, we are targeting Android version API level 19, which would work for Android phones with the version 4.4, which is around a coverage of 95% around the globe. And uh, uh, the main reason uh, you can see even over here, this is not something looks like a standard Android application. Again, we use UI customizations to customize the application to our uh, local requirement. The first one you can see is a uh, trilingual language support. And the next one is the home screen uh, that we will see on the upcoming slides. And uh, visual validation is available that will also, uh, Dr. Amali will be just talking with you. And we used an open Android uh, graph library to represent graphs in a visual format that will be also in the upcoming slide. Over to Amali. Thank you, Mr. Asli. So as you can see, this is the login interface. I'm going to explain the app in uh, screenshots. Uh, they will log in using a username password and the trilingual interface. The prime requirement was that uh, the system had to be designed using the trilingual interface. As you all know, Sri Lanka has three main languages. So it was requested at the login page. So once you once a user logged in, the user was presented with a screen which displayed a, a kind of a dashboard, and the number of children under care and the programs they are assigned to are shown in the first six icons, the colorful icons, and on the below, the other side you can uh, see properly. Uh, they have the view my area details, child registration, once a minute new child comes, and synchronization and change language. So when you go to the view my data area details, this is how you see your the list of children under your care. And once you click a child, you can go into the child's profile. When there's a new child comes, uh, they have to register a child. So we usually take the basic details like the name, address, age, date of birth, and the mother's information or the caregiver's information, and also birth date and the birth length will be recorded during the registration, which is a one-time action only during registration. So once you once the child is registered, the profile will appear like this, and you all can see the below. I have enlarged it. The, Already enrolled programs are not enrolled programs are there. And when when a child will be immediately registered in the anthropometric program, which is symbolized from that icon, the colorful icon there on the top. Uh, yeah, group chat. Yes. So if every child will be automatically uh, registered into that program, but the below icons. Uh, if, a if a child is mal malnourished only, the PHM will be designed uh, to which uh, program they will be enrolled. And according to that, the public health meanwhile will enroll to that those programs. So I'll just simply explain the anthropometry, the, the growth monitoring. Uh, so once you enter that program, you select the program stage, and that is the... Uh, height weight and entering uh, interface so you, you all can see it supports color coding as you type it based on who reference ranges so it 
it will lessen the errors. Uh, and uh, once you enter the height way, you can plot the graphs. So these are the graphs, weight for age, height for age, weight for height graphs. And what are the risk factors she will enter? Because uh, as you all know, she is a field level healthcare worker, and she she is aware of the child's family circumstances and issues. And also, PHM has the criteria which needs to be followed to mark these uh, household risk factors. So we have categorized these into five. Poor child feeding practices, high prevalence of communicable diseases, low food security, food poverty and poor income management, and inadequate water and poor sanitation. Depending on the household risk factors, uh, midwife will be marking the, these uh, risk factors. And that's basically the uh, role of midwife. That's where the mobile component ends. So the anthropometry will be continued, then the, uh, the program enrollments will be continued. And following marking this, then the web components come. I will invite Mr. Hasri again to explain about the technology part. Thank you again. So apart from this mobile application, we also do have a web application, which is to support some additional functionalities, which cannot be provided through a mobile interface. So this particular mobile application, uh, sorry, web application was developed using AngularJS. So considering the fact that we started with way earlier, at the time we don't have that much of a support like we have today. So, and some additional functionalities my question is uh, just one, just to uh, for my clarification. That, uh, previously, it was explained that there is a mobile application and uh, midwife is uh, doing uh, uh, evaluating the child and then she's entering into a specific program. Now, why is she entering into Okay. So she's uh, registering. Uh, she's registering the child into the respective program. What, whatever, uh, whichever is available to the child. Yeah. And then uh, uh, you said just right now that then we go to the other page which have got some extra uh, options. So for that, the child will be moved to which area? Will it be will it be power? Uh, because midwife will be not having the computer. She will be having only the mobile. Yeah. Just for the clarity, so that we can think of in our area, we can also think of that. This sure. Is, it's also if uh, only six thousand nine hundred fifteen uh, public health device they have Android phones. If yes, 
Uh, sure. So let me answer to the first question. So thanks for pointing out a mistake on my presentation. So actually, this mobile application will be used by the midwives. This web application is for mainly for the administration only. So maybe doctor can explain a bit further on that, those who are using that. Yeah, yeah as you all know, that the DHIS2, we have user levels. So the midwife's role is only in the uh, mobile component. Uh, the only role is that she will only register the child for the respective program. Exactly. And, and then the baby will be later on checked, uh, uh, taken care of by me. Yes, yes. Uh, that's right. You are saying like this. Exactly. Yeah. No, but my question was, if a, a baby... Child, if child data, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So that part here. And then in the Android app, we have yeah, so uh, in the Android app, we have some very minimal visualization for analyzing, but all this data that is captured in the mobile app will be synchronized with the data server. Once it is synchronized, anybody logging in, including the big byte, should be able to see the same data capture as well as dashboards, analysis, and everything on their version. But as you correctly mentioned, big byte don't have uh, access to that. But in their office, the main office, uh, like uh, uh, what the big bytes are reporting, they have a they have a couple of computers so they can use it uh, when they do this uh, monthly reviews and more. And their supervising officer will monitor the activity. How many at all? How much? What is the time period in which it is analyzed? Yeah. And then it goes to again to the child, which uh, the child needs the help. In whatever category she uh, he or she is registered. So, because the midwife is entering, it is real time. Like she knows that you are the I can. Yeah. But you have the, 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 the ministry will give response to the uh, midwife that. She has been entered into the following program, actually, by biological data. And then it is, uh, and then she will come to know that how I am going to treat the child, or treat the child, or manage the child, uh, what ex, uh, what support she needs. She are needs. Yeah. So one component, one area that we that is not extensively covered is this multi-sector collaboration and mention. So as I mentioned, now when the child is primary, that is indicated, but the course of parentation should be held or not. So they at the village level, they have a multi-sector committee, midwife, agriculture officer, uh, social services, and more. So they are supposed to have this regular meeting, ideally monthly, but you know, practically it is not happening monthly. So in that, so or if it is a health reason, midwife and the medical doctor who is in charge of the area will identify and they will already they will have already attended. But other courses, if there are agriculture problems, social services, that will be discussed at this multi-sector uh, committee that is happening at and, and how much period it will be? Uh, I think it should be one month. But then again, practically, I think it, it could be even longer, right? There are implementation challenges. So, so the, the one yeah. yeah. I the Data appears on the roster, then the application, 
and she can register the child into one of the four programs. Yes. And then if the four programs are health or agriculture or social, whatever they are, component. But managing the, 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 the different program is at the facility or different multi sector level. Yeah, yeah. slightly as uh, somewhat correct. So the thing is that these different programs that we mentioned. So there will be one compulsory program which is anti I mean, yeah. I can wait for the other one is yeah. 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 Then like uh out of the programs she mentioned, except one, everything else is very health sensitive. Like whether it is hunting or overweight and obesity, moderate climate is a life. So in the team level, she based on her understanding, she's not a medical fund, she's a health fund. She will enroll that person into the uh your program. Mm -hmm. And once she does that, the medical doctor who's providing that advice will also be able to see this patient on the computer. So he is supposed to kind of supervise her to see whether she has been registered with the child has been registered to a program. That is what you're going to explain right now. Yes, they should. Yeah, she should be able to see. But also, uh, the other thing is they will not have access to mobile and they will be having access to the web. So, is there so any, uh, any option of uh, registering the child for the severe malady? Uh, and the alert goes directly to the doctor immediately the moment the she does because waiting for one month yeah. means another one month. I think what they're asking about the intervention to the child. Yeah. 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 So this forget about this mobile app. The system has been there for ages in Sri Lanka in paper based system. When when the child is severely malnourished, the PHN has a criteria what to do. We have this BP hundred, and we have to refer to the hospital. She will do that then and there. And if the child is moderately malnourished, there are some certain approaches to do. It's the it's just that the multi-sectoral part where the other sectors comes in, we didn't have that. So this is basically uh, what we connected, and you you are correct as you correctly said. The multi-sector part is the challenge. I will speak about the challenges in other slides. Yeah. And, and, and our part is the uh, next part of the yes. trend question was whether the mobiles yes. are being provided by the yes. are they, uh, the, 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 the midwife and it's are using our own. Yes, I will. Uh, you want me to ask that? Oh, yes. because yes. There, it, I'll be discussing that in. Oh, yeah. Well, we should hear it and we'll have them then I will forget about it. <laughs> right, so thank you. Yes. Can you just uh, indicate on the relationship to the nutrition? So we are going to be able to have PG going without the uh, nutrition. Any meal for the reductive woman? Okay, thank you. So technology parts, so these are the main things we have to highlight. And uh, we, we can install the application and it can be uh, accessed through the uh, search. And uh, to talk about why we need to again have a customized web application is number one is we need to show the progress of nutritional parameters uh, for a specific period on an individual. So again, considering the fact that we started the project, this is what uh, natively supported in DHIS2. So it, this is one of the reason why we need to use a uh, web app for uh, visualizing these kind of information. And there are some other additional uh, analytical requirements from different stakeholders. And to cater to them, again, we thought of going for a web application. And um, I think doctor may be talking more about the different user levels. and. Uh, for better to those different user levels, we have to 
uh, go for a web app and the reasons will be discussed by doctor. Thank you. Uh, before she starts, I will uh, I will submit my excuse. It's not for the question. Question is not for the question. Actually, at the same time, the whole thing is going in our mind for our own country. That what we will be doing that. Yes, understood. So, so the thing yeah. is like this: we are calculating and estimating and assessing the situation. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, as Mr. Hapsley explained, so we have this customized app uh, other than the generic apps. So, the user levels, the PHM is the only one who's using the mobile app. The other levels above her, the supervising officers, the medical officer of health and the other central level people will be using this. And also the non-health partners will be using the web component. We, will, we have developed different user levels for different, different users. Uh, so this is the web app that we have customized. So there are also, uh, you can see the malnutrition analysis, data categorization based on nutrition nutritional problem and also it support data visualization based on selected area hierarchy, sorry. Okay. And data approval to refer to other sectors. So if this is, a, uh, let's say I'm the medical officer of health and my uh, the midwife has referred 21 children which needs attention from the other health se other sectors. Not the health sector, but the other sectors. So uh, we can, Review uh, the medical officer of health can review each and each and every child individually, and refer them by ticking the tick. Uh, they can refer them to the non-health sector, and after referring them, only the non-health sector will see the list of children uh, who needs their attention. Uh, so this is an individual profile in the in the web app. They also we support the graphs. Um, uh, yes, yes. And the in the individual child profile, once you review a child, the, the icons will turn green. Before that, it will be yellow. Once you review the child, it will turn green. So these are the trainings that we did. Uh, that was basically about the web app. Uh, I will quickly go through the strengths and lessons learned. So it was a re real-time surveillance system on nutrition and it uh, of, of offline data entering in areas with poor network coverage. Uh, mobile devices being an efficient method of field-level data collecting and transmission. And the acceptance by the end users were excellent. End users were positive on the approach of multi-sector action plan for nutrition. And this required a minimal learning curve, the use simple mobile technology. Interfaces was quite similar to the existing color coding graphs in the paper-based system. And they can use this tool as a monitoring tool for their monthly reviews, district reviews, and uh, national reviews. The challenges, I will, of course, the lack of infrastructure. This, as you asked, sir, the mobile devices were provided for the end users. Uh, in the first project, it was provided by the UNICEF. The second project, only for the pilot I'm talking about. The first project, it was UNICEF. The second project, it was WFP. So yeah. Good, yeah, good question. So, so there is a significant capital cost associated with the purchasing mobile devices. It is even true for maintenance and replacement of devices. This is a major concern regarding sustainability of mobile solution. Governments like us, it is very difficult to uh, bear this large cost. Uh, for, for the And the multi-sector collaboration, this should be, even though we have a multi-sector action plan for nutrition, 
the collaboration is very difficult with the other sectors. And there is no mechanism in place to support the system at all levels when it comes to the field levels. Like any queries, the field level staff has to call the center and get uh, it get it sorted. And of course, the financial resources for future training activities and the use of mobile data. We had initially during the uh, pilot project, we gave them uh, the, we we covered the expenses by giving them a fee. And now it has expired and it has discouraged the midwives. So way forward, scaling up to the national level and strengthening the multi-sector collaboration and building up a network to support of all levels. Public-private partnerships. So when it comes to infrastructure, the governments, I don't think, governments like Sri Lanka cannot bear the cost. So uh, I think that public, it has to go for a public-private partnership. Yep. Thank you. So, so very good. Thank you. If there is uh, no dedicated uh, sinks provided by uh, the ministry, it's the same thing which is a personal thing, she's using it. So no incentives have uh, were provided for the data. And if they do not have Android phone, then is there any SMS-based uh, approach for this? So these are... But if there's no internet... Yeah, so again, uh, this is how nine year context. So, in the first phase, there were there were the physics of the providers, as you mentioned, mobile the providers, there were the data and others in the world. But it was very difficult to sort of data. But uh, while she mentioned this from the meeting to the uh, the MCH unit department, and I think some of you did your previous, so they are, uh, I mean, there is a little bit of overlap with MCH and MCH. So they also have generally converted filters and everything. So those ones, what they are doing really is uh, they are asking for the device to use their own devices. Not even if I listen to them, much. They are ready, right? So in that one, they do. But this project uh, is not scaled all across the country. And some of the like due to, I think, maybe too much infrastructure and the uh, replacement of devices, right? So they have actually done, I mean, they have still not been able to save the entire country, this uh, goes on But But uh, I have any questions. There is a similar program which is run by the MCH. And uh, that one, of course, uh, they are using the right uh, in their service. I mean, Mahmoud, a very well presentation. Uh, and uh, uh, just for one comment, we uh, Asian countries. We, we do have uh, some very common problems. So no sustainability in the thing, uh, uh, the program, the projects, more are very good. And, uh, they give the very good result, but when there is no sustainability, the risks are going. This is yeah, my journal for you. So, uh, so within the district of the building where this project is done, what is the interrelation between that and the MP service? So the, the, the data is pushed onto the DHIS, the, the patient record, the child record, right? So do they use that data? Or, I mean, I can see the data on the DHIS, but it's not by the output. output. So is there a correlation between what the nutrition unit is doing or what the MP system? Did I answer? <laughs> right, so again, okay. She is she is able to ask, but I don't think this but I was uh involving people in the one decade. So this is a challenge, right? There is some overlap when it comes to the scope of work between individual division and agency. So in case also see some uh into some of the division activities. The good thing is I will say both the positive and negative. Positive thing is both the divisions or department are using DHS, right? That's the so technology wise, you have similarities. And they try as much as possible not to kind of do overlapping things. But uh, while the nutrition division does this comprehensive assessment of roles and nutrition, the MCS is more focused about getting period. So they are they are they had this uh, tracker implementation just after COVID. 
because there was a big uh, uh, allegation from all the political parties saying like uh, economic crisis and COVID has let, uh, let a lot of management. So to do that, they had a part of project money on pattern. Individual level for some time. But other than that, it seems to be they are they are actually uh, having this thing called nutrition one. So every year, month of June, they will be doing a comprehensive survey. But other than that, it's a nutrition nutrition who's doing this uh, comprehensive thing all through. Yes, they have some uh, coordination, the aggregate data at the district and national level, they, uh, the, the departments are sharing, and there is a little bit of, uh, you know, like they, they, they see each other's data. Yeah. Tracker, they have the tracker, and this is that. Tracker data, of course, unfortunately, I, again, like, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think uh, the tracker instance that you are running here, the NCS department is not having access, right? So individual level data, but see, you have different departments at the top, but at the bottom, it's the same one. The they have uh, with the management. So we have NCE, in the community, then we have the child, the IMCI. So as the IMCI are just screening and then but they need to talk together. So as a part, I have in a way happy because at screen level, the screen and stuff has access. But whatever department, she's the one who's like data. So she has kind of a holistic view of everything. But uh, again, higher level collaboration is a never thing. So we know we need to talk about the answer. I have answer. He's a very good, very well. Thank you so much. I'm um, finishing up. Uh, but now we're going to do that. OK, now we have actually logistics challenge for this thing here again. Because uh, we have one more presentation from Bangladesh, and then we have an entire session on both of them. So if you don't mind, we can answer questions later, and we will uh, quickly let the Bangladesh do, this, do their presentation, and then so uh, in Bangladesh, again, by the time is getting a uh, presentation and lots of prepared, it's more about uh, what they have done at the level, the level. Uh, it's a, it's a So let me open it. Thank you. Can help. So actually, uh, I mean, where the Pamos and his team uh, presented, that was uh, started from the uh, malnutrition measurement with height and weight. But uh, in some cases, this is a study of uh, using MUA. Uh, Thing one. Thing yeah. So, uh, in some cases, we uh, in many countries are in the field visit, like in the domiciliary visit, uh, the um, community health worker are reluctant to take the height board and weight board weight matching with them to every uh, household. So uh, in that cases, they uses a MOAC tape uh, that is meet upper arm circumstances. So they measure it for the uh, six month to 59 month children. So it is basically used in uh, community setting and in some cases where there are emergencies. So you need to uh, at least screen the child very quickly. So uh, here is it who does not know the measurement. So rather taking the height board and weight board and then taking the measurement, so there is a mock tape which have a red portion and then yellow portion and the green portion for the measurement. So uh, we, uh, I mean, on this study, we are going to assess that whether the MOAC is a tool which can be used uh, at the field level as a screening tool. Or, or it is uh, not suitable in this case. So for this measurement, we have taken 
sensitivity, specificity, positive predictivity, negative predictivity as a uh, statistical tool. Okay. So in uh, our case, uh, uh, like it has been said by Sri Lanka and uh, all of these uh, surrounding countries are saying, we, in our case, we are taking the disease information from IMCI and also the nutrition information in the same tracker uh, operating at the field. Uh, so from there, this variable uh, we have calculated here, the uh, date of the service and date of the measurement and the date of the date of uh, birth of this child, and then his height, weight, and then the MOAC measurement. So these are the fields we have calculated. And from this, we have calculated the SAM and MAM child uh, by the WHO uh, measurement, like the median and their two standard deviation high and then below are the three uh, as a MAM and the SAM. So uh, those who have uh, not know about the, these tools of like sensitivity, specificity, positive predictivity, and then negative predictivity. So the uh, sensitivity is actually uh, used as a low rate of false negative. So it basically, I mean, when you don't have a, uh, when it uh, does not have a, a, a individual is not uh, a, uh, having the disease, but he has been, uh, uh, she has been uh, characterized as the di diseased person. So uh, at that specificity, it's just the opposite. And then the positive predictivity is mostly same, but it actually referred to the uh, post evaluation and then, uh, I mean, pre evaluation and then sensitivity and specificity is really used as a pre evaluation. So, so after this study, we have found that the sensitivity and uh, positive predictivity are are much lower in terms of uh, BAM and SAM patient identification. So it probably uh, the, uh, the the lower value has been represented that the, at the community setting, probably it is not a good tool to use at a, uh, yes, as, as a screening tool, because at the facility level, when it has been measured, it found that uh, the sensitivity and positive predictivity is low. So probably it is due to uh, geographical setting. Might be in it. It might not be uh, a suitable tool for all geographical setting, but it might be helpful for other geographic setting. And then in terms of when we come to the uh, from moderate to severe patient, so we found that there in a positive predictivity it has a sharp down. So uh, that uh, is for the weight for height part, and it is same for the uh, height for age and also the weight for age. So it has a, almost similar kind of pattern we have found in three of the main uh, measurement of WHO standard tool. So uh, to combat this result, I mean, the, the sensitivity in this result also uh, identified this according to different sex, so male and female. And in male and female, so we found that the uh, height for age and also the weight for height uh, there are no significant difference between the male and female child, but uh, in weight for age, uh, there are significant difference between the male and female. So, and uh, also uh, then come to the positive predictivity. So uh, here is also same the uh, height for age and weight for height. There is no significant difference, but uh, in the in the weight for age, there are significant difference identified between male and female. So this has been conducted with uh, uh, taking the consideration of 95% standard level with the uh, alpha 0 0.05. And uh, now uh, when, when it comes in terms of ACE specific uh, analysis, so we uh, consider, I mean, uh, below are then five year of level. So we have taken by different type of intervention like zero to five months who are exclusively breastfeeded and six to 11 months uh, that are breastfeeded, but they are in infant age, and then 12 to 23 months, uh, they are uh, with the complementary breastfeeding, but out of infant, and 23 to 24, uh, 59 months, uh, that are uh, ex exit from the breastfeeding. So uh, among this, uh, when we have found that uh, there are significant differences, uh, and uh, in, in terms of weight for age and weight for height, but there is no significant difference in terms of uh, height for age. 
and we found that among these three groups, the 11 to 23 year month child are more sensitive, so that uh, the, the, that matches with their uh, below, I mean, measurement at the both, and then the measurement at the height and width. So for that group, it has been uh, matched, but for the other groups, the below groups and the higher groups, that has not been matched significantly. So, uh, so from from this research, what can be done? There, uh, because uh, as we found that the uh, there is a sharp decline in SAM. So, uh, whether the patient is SAM or MAM, that should be assessed at the health facility level. And uh, then, uh, then there are some organizations who are already developed some tool for a specific MOAC tool. So that can be used because the uh, the MOAC tool has been used in Bangladesh and also in most of the countries. Uh, that is not AZ specific. So that from six months to uh, five year, it has the same measurement. So and uh, then uh, also there is uh, there is a requirement for making a generalized linear model using the H6 combination because we have not done that. And then uh, with uh, also it it for, for the height as we found that the height measurement have a much difference from from the measurement of MOAT. So it also required uh, an in-depth analysis with the height of the parents because that has a significant difference when the patient, when the child is growing uh, more than two years. We found it from the WHO standard. It it always uh, then uh, a genetical factor has been come forward rather than a nutrition factor. Uh, I think that's all from me. Yes. So, so it means that uh, even for mass, the cost uh, is person. Yes, that has been identified so, in this. Uh, again, what we have discussed in the field is uh, those who are doing the wrong community, they are not uh, specifically. Uh, specialized in the nutrition, maybe, maybe health worker or something. So, again, uh, false positive and both false negative. Yes. We can skip and we can also reject. Okay. Yeah. So, again, it's, it's building a burden when she refers a patient, a boy, a child who is not married to the OTP child or nutrition child, yes. where the, the child is again ill and Parents are saying that it's, it's fine. It's fine. And sometimes there is a, a the parents are not happy when they are better and they will be from very far. So these guys are not available. So thank you very much for this. Uh, and it, it, it's helping us now decide how to go. And also, the, I mean, the false positive, but also the, I mean, false negative are also impacted. Right. Too. Most of the same because when you've identified the child in the field uh, for, uh, as not malnourished, but they are actually malnourished. So it, it creates another part. So, any other question? For me? I think so, John. Thank you very much. Is that uh, the
Hello? It's okay? So uh, this is the project which has been initiated from quite some time. So I'll just go through a few things. Uh, in the, I have already uploaded all these slides um, in the Google Doc. So after this presentation, Nick will go through on how can you access all this presentation and everything. There is also a URL which you can actually log in online and like can I play with it? It's fine. It's a demo site which we which I'll also use to demo for this for cost of that. We all know about DHIS2. I'm not going to get into what is DHIS2. So let's just, just only about the cause of death. So the need, why do we need it? The cause of death reporting. We all know like it's um, the cause of death, like it was very crucial for the planning and making the things, how many of the trends we have and the problems, what we faced. Just one second, let's get it on. The availability of uh, incomplete and inaccurate coding system. So we have seen this one quite some time. Before ICD 11, we had ICD 10. We had implemented that one in Solomon Islands, starting with and also like in some other countries. And then we have to do, there were people were entering a couple of codes together, entering wrong data. And it was very hard to, to, to combine and like make the things uh, through. And then ICD coders, in especially Solomon Islands and other places, there were only one person, all the data is to come to one place, and then that's where they're doing the data entry. And in other countries, like in, in Laos, uh, they're still doing the training on ICD-11, and or ICD-10, not even 11 yet. So there are lots of gaps on all different things. First thing is just like people are recording all the things, but they have not been trained on ICD-11 and all different things, or ICD-10. But also at the technical level, so they didn't really had any kind of places where we can try to to combine all these things together. So uh, there were lots of initiatives from Uganda, from other places where they built custom uh, form in Tracker and like have lots of developers and everyone to, to make an app. So what we try to do, let's just try to make a generic app which can be installed in any DHRs to instance so that like you can try to collect the data in a more seamless manner without using any kind of developer. So like we have lots of guide and everything. We work quite a lot, quite hard on making a generic solution so that we can install in any DHS instance. So to, to begin with the WHO HQ um, and DDI department. So they asked us to create a, this app. Before creating the app, we also did a review of all the other system in DHS too and in other places where they have customized the ICD-11 coding tool into DHRS2. And what it was, some places they went to, uh, we have three types of program, right? Aggregate, event, and tracker. So most of the people went into events because like I said, death is one time. Why do we have to put it in tracker? But the problem is if you put it as an event, then you lose lots of things. All the patient names and everything, it's in patient attributes. So it should be in the tracker. And then you are linking the cause of death data also to CRVS people. So then it will become very hard if you can configure it as an event program. So we went through quite a lot of things and also just say like how best we can try to synchronize the data between cause of death and as well as the CRV system. So there are a few pilots happening on, on that, that side. And also, if you people know the Anacord 3, so what happens if you're collecting all the data, but Anacord 3, it has a particular format which they want to try to analyze. So um, people have been uh, doing kind of SQL queries and everything to write all these things down. So we just say, okay, let's just identify what are all the requirements, what we need for cost of death. And then we try to combine everything in one single app. So just to going through the few of the, the key features. So it's um, easily configurable. So no developer is involved. So you can install it in your own DHS too. I'll go through on that one a bit. A simplified data entry. Even though we are using Tracker, it is DHRS2 in the backend, but like it's an app which just like hides all different kind of fields and gives the end user very simple way. And we made it exactly as your paper form looks like. In the cause of death, you always have frame A and frame B, right? Frame A, you identify all the causes and everything, and frame B has the, uh, the specific things, whether it is a maternal death or infant death. So both the things has been set up for, for that. Um, it also has you can collect real time, um, and it also links directly with the WHO ICD-11 coding tool, 
whether it is in the WHO one or if you have already installed ICD coding tool in your Docker, both can be connected to this one. The other part is you also have cause of death certificate. So we have a simple cause of death certificate where it can be printed directly from the data entry screen. And also some of the, um, uh, the countries that wanted a specific format with a logo and all different things, that can also be done inside the app itself. So you don't have to go somewhere else to print the, the cause of death report. It is in, inside the app. Um, there are also few rule engine based on the age and um, uh, gender. So um, if, uh, if it is um, under one year, you get infant mortality details. If it is female, then you get the maternal mortality details also. The, um, and one of the main thing is the translation. We speak very different languages, so also the app can be translated in many places or many languages. And it's user can themselves, they can uh, change, add their own languages. I'll show that one how it is. And if people have already done, like last time, like in a, for you, like you give us the, all the translations, so we already put it in the app itself, so that like other countries don't have to, to do it. So if you if you see that translation is not there, so you can always add. So these are some screenshots. I'm not going to do the screenshots. It's better to just actually just see the app itself. So quickly, let me just scroll down. Ah. So I'll just log out just for a second. So this is the uh, demo URL. So dhs2.world slash cause of death. And the username password are exactly around here. So you can type your username password and you can play around with it. It's no problem. Yes, I see the level. So once you log in, so you also have all the functionalities and everything and also the app itself, which you can download and you can test. Please don't test it in the production one. Always test it in the, the development instance. I said 11. Okay. Yes. Yes. Like this is the one things which every country is asking. We already have in DHS to ICD 10, but like in now you're selling to use ICD 11. And this question we've been asking WHO because we cannot do if they have any kind of mapping and all the things we can try to do that one up. The one of the way what we've been like telling all the countries, you don't um, uh, merge what you try to do, keep your IC recording one time and you import, you do the other transformation and everything and import it to the new one. So that like you don't edit the old data. Okay. So just going through quickly through the app itself. So in here, this is the ICD coding um, cause of death app, ICD 11. So when you, I'm just like open like on here. So when you open the app, let's just see if the internet is there. You will see all the menus from here. It just like comes around a bit time. Yeah, so there is data entry module. Um, export, dashboard, administration, and translation itself. So these are all different things which you can try to, to deal. Oh, no, 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 okay. Uh, this is depending on your DHS2 instance, right? So once you configure the DHS2, and if you allow any private person to enter the data, then this app can also be used there. So this is just on your DHS2 itself, okay? So before going to data entry, let me just like quickly go through the administration part itself. Here you have user manual inbuilt itself in the app. So you can try to go through it. And I'll just go through the quickly the installation. So once you once you install the app, you will not see all this field. So what you just see, like it's just, this is the, the place where you can download. And the first thing is this one, is you need to point to where is your ICD 11 coding tool is existing. This is the global one, which they use. So when we enter the search, it goes to that particular place. And they also have a Docker image, which you can install in your own server. So that's the first part, what you are trying to do. I don't go to the default. I'll just quickly go to the custom part itself. This is where you have to, because when we install ICD cause of that app in your DHS, 
in your DHS2, you already have tracker program for malaria, TB, or other things, right? You are collecting first name, you're collecting last name, you're collecting date of birth, you're collecting gender and all different things. So what this app does is it will give, these are all the mandatory fields, but you select, what is it called? Maybe the first name is called um, uh, given name, last name is called a family name, or all different things, you can try to use it. But in the app, you also have, like for example, some people requested, we don't want any names. And like, for example, in Bangladesh, they say like, we don't have first name, last name, but full name in one area. So the app can also be, when you install, you can select whether you want full name, first name, last name, or no name. So these are the three options which you already have. Yeah, and then once you select all these different things, you can decide. In my country, we are also having passport number or insurance number or other attributes. These are all the attributes what you try to do so that you can try to include it itself. So the app will allow to add your own personal attributes, what you want to try to collect. Then is a frame A. Frame A, we just say cannot be modified. Frame A and frame B, you cannot modify, but you can add additional sections. Like for example, I also want to get the investigation details. So you can have additional data elements and all the things that you can try to include it directly here. Then this is the one place, where are we collecting this? Which hospital, which group? that you have to select. So I just say, okay, in my country, not all the health facilities, but only the hospitals and private hospitals are going to fill this form. So you can select that, that one. And this is the part which most of the people miss. In DHIS2, we have three types of user group. Every program, you need to have an admin. That means someone who can actually change the, the if there is a name changes or anything, data element name or other things, field name, that is admin group. Other one is data capture, person who can actually capture the data. The third rule is who can view. That means the person cannot edit, cannot do anything, but he can only view the data. So you can select either the person or the user group that this particular person can only view the data or all different things. Yeah, and then you just review and installation will be done. So this has been, this app, has been tested heavily on all these things, and it has also been used in, in many countries. Just yesterday, uh, Solomon Islands, Neeraj installed the cause of death app. So we, we had some problems, so like we already fixed it, it was inside the thing. So it has been tested from 35 to 40. So if you are a country using anything below than 35, please don't use this app yet. So better to upgrade to any of the things. And then like you can try to, to use all these things. So just now very quickly, I'll try to do a, a registration. So these are a few things. I just say Harry Potter 2 or 10. And date of birth, you can just say 23 years. Um, let's just say female address and all different things. I just like save. So then like here, we also went through lots of changes. When we implemented, this one wasn't there. We had only the ICD-11. So they wanted the free text so that like when the people are writing in the paper form or if they are using directly, they wanted what did the doctor say and what are the coders are saying. So like here, let's just say, let me just quickly just do this. It was... So like when I click on here, so when I search, okay. So when you are searching, this is actually not in DHRS2. It is going the first time when I showed the installation, it is all the way in the uh, WHO thing. So it is actually asking the WHO IC recording website and giving you all the different details. So where you can do all different things, search, you have the everything around here. This is the whole ICD-11, which you have in your place, okay? And then like, you can just like select and save. And like, these are the, this is very things you can try to use. Okay, three weeks. And let me just select one more.
Okay, so I'll just select this one. One last, let's just say it's in the years, years, and then Well, I just said. So, like, if you remember this last column, underlining cause of death. So, we have an option where you can select this underlining cause of death, or in here you can actually compute. So, just tell me what is your underlining cause of death. So, when you click, so it will select the underlining cause of death and also gives all different full report from from the stories tool, which has also been integrated in the in the app. So, not only just giving you the Few of the details, but also in other things. This national ID and passport is not mandatory. No, it's up to you. If you want to make it mandatory, it's up to you. What, for example, yeah. you want. Yeah. 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 Now that's why I'm saying we what we are trying to give is a tool. Then, like you have to select like the first screen which I showed you, like all the. The things you can select no name or first name or things and none of these things and you can choose as in your dhs to what do you want to make it mandatory or not mandatory like if we have to modify the current one. yeah yes <laughs> now here like the, what they've been trying to do this is the frame b like if we just see the manner of death if i selected uh one, under one year you will have two more sections so, yeah, so like whenever additional things. Yes. So like this one in the frame A, it looks same, but in frame B, so I'm right now I'm in the frame B based on, if you just see, if it is a female, you have the, uh, the maternal death. If I just say male, then this one will be gone. And if it is under one year, then you will get infant death. If, then you'll start. So this one will actually help you in awarding data entry mistake. So we are not even going to show the infant death column if the age is uh, different, age and gender, okay? So this is just a normal data entry. Okay, so now let me just see frame A, I have done all different things. This is a very simple uh, cause of death certificate, which you can modify whatever you want. And you can also include proper one, which I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Let's just say, that's in administration, I guess. So these are also other things which you can try to install or configure and all the things. I'll come back to that to a bit later. Okay, just quickly, what are all the other features? So this, is, this is just the data entry part, okay? Um, So here, these are a list of all the people what you've been trying to re-enter and play around and things. Then let's go for the dashboard. So these are all custom dashboard, which WHO already wanted to have. When you click on underlying cause of death, it is already broken down by different use um, cause groups, which you can try to analyze. And these are the dashboards which you get automatically when you install this app. And all the data is coming directly from what you have entered. This one, let's just say NCD, um, most frequent cause of death. You also have death by the chapters. So these are all the the things what you have, tuberculosis, HIV, all these things. And we can try to add more and more. Um, other part which I want to show is Anacord export. You can select the year. I don't want to run it now. I guess I would run it here. And this is the exact way, like what you have. And then you can try to, to download the, all the, the data from, from here, which you can try to use your own Anacard 2 for the analysis. Quick, Anacard 3. But we also have one other issue, which is a uh, population that's also been like handled. So like here, all the translation, what you can try to do. Right now we have translated in English, French, and Arabic, but if you want, you can add your own languages. 
I just where did it went? Add the language. So these are here. You can add like let's just say Bengali or things, and then you have it all here. Then you can translate by yourself, or we can also give you the list of all the translation. Translation is just a UI. Like when you do this data entry, do that data entry. That's the the whole things what you can try to do. Okay. Let me quickly show you how the translation will look like. I guess like I've covered all the things. Before that one on the administration part, for example, this is the cause of death certificate. And you just say, I don't want to include name. I don't want to include things. You can include in the header or footer or the body or the different kind of logo. That's up to you. But if you want a custom one, you can ask any of your his, uh, members to create a simple report, which can be put around here. That's also is the, the one of things. It's custom way where you can just upload your, your report so that you can try to deal with it. Okay. So now let me go back. I just want to quickly show you the translation itself. This is, I'm just like now changing it to, let's just say Arabic. So now all the, the things will be translated in uh, Arabic itself. So including the data entry screens and, and everything. So here is the information which you can try to download directly from the DHS to App Hub. So if you you all know where to find the, uh, the um, tools, right? The apps.dhs.org, that's where like all the, the apps which can be used. So we can just say ICD. So then like you have it from here. So which you can download it and like use it and all. So in the app itself, you have all the, the manuals and everything. Yeah, here you go. So all the things are data of reporting. That's okay. Someone has entered the wrong data. So many of these screens and everything has been changed, which you can try to, to use it at the later stage. Okay. Including the dashboards and, and all. Yeah. Now, thanks to people around here, his Mina, they did the, all the translation and all the things. Okay. Yeah, it's exact three. So, any questions? No? Perfect. <laughs> yes, please. Sorry, this app. And... Ah, this is not verbal autopsy, right? So, when you do the verbal autopsy, that's completely different. So, then, like it's doing afterwards. This one is medical, ah, uh, medical certificate. Uh, cause no, no, this is a term. Yeah, medically certified cause of death. So there are two types of um, um, things, right? One is verbal autopsy, where you, the people go after the things are just like, and this one is the medically certificate cause of death that only the ICD coders are doing. Most of the the big hospitals they have a coder. It's not usually doctor. The doctor will just like write, okay, cardiac card, arrest, all things, but the the ICD coder have to actually just write exact word or exact terminology, and that's usually requires lots of training uh, of of doing that. Not only that's many countries are been start standardizing that one. They use ICD ten, but that was like if they, any kind of changes happen, it was hard. But here now, any kind of new things happening, it's all in the web. So and even the ICD coding tool has been translated. Like for example here, so uh, <laughs> because like now it's all in Arabic, so you you can type everything in in Arabic, so you will get all the things. So the ICD uh, coding tool has been translated into eleven languages, so which you can try to to use it for your own. Okay, yes, please. Yes, for it. Well, uh, we also you can use Anacor Pizza. So, what the advantages do you get to or Pizza? Okay, so the thing is, if you are using Anacor, first thing is the data entry, right? So, in DHRS2, you do the, all the data entry. Anacor is just only for the analysis, which is aggregate number, right? So, what you're seeing around here, uh, did I miss that one up? Ah. So here, what you what DHS or this tool is doing, it's giving you the output of an account, which you can download 
and use your own local anacol for analysis. But all the data entry is it's by names, right? Anacol is just like the number. This is the door risk. This is integrated. Uh, this one here. What you are seeing, this is actually Doris. So Doris gives you the tools for um, underlying cause of death. So what we did was when we made this app, Doris was not there yet. And then we've been working very closely with Doris, the person. <laughs> <laughs> we worked very closely with her and the team to integrate the Doris, the tool, into this app. So now in this app, you also have Doris. Yeah. Sure. Anakar three. Oh no, but we have uh, we finished. But I guess like Farida and you can try to work together. Yeah, that's Indonesia and Bangladesh just nearby. <laughs> because like I guess like we have to move up soon, so they would have been also finished so that like we can end up the session and then you have more time to explore Sri Lanka. If you have any things, please, everything is in online. Uh, all this application and everything is, you can use it. So no problem. Okay.